the latest tech. People love iPhone, and it's an important part of our daily lives. Interviews. We see far too many products that come on the market that you look at that you say, was a blind person ever even consulted for something like this? Accessibility. The most interesting thing over the last couple of years is the emphasis on gaming uh, and accessibility. This is Double Tap TV. Hey guys, welcome to the show. I am Stephen Scott. And I am Mark Aflalo. Stephen, we're talking about a sensitive topic today. And that's because a new product coming out by Humanware called the Stellar Trek. And, and why do I say sensitive, Stephen? Well, because whenever we talk about a replacement for the guide dog or the white cane, I think it raises a lot of concern and rightfully so, right? Oh, absolutely. Any new device that comes out at any time that promises to provide information to us in a way that can assist us maybe more than a white cane or maybe more than a, a, a guide dog can is certainly, you know, always going to be a concern. But I will say humanware are not suggesting that here. They are saying this is very much a device that is about being an assistant alongside those devices. And I don't think anybody would suggest that the Stellar Trek or the Trekker Breeze that preceded it would ever be the device that you would turn to alone. You would always want to have a white cane. You would always want to have your guide dog there. Um, but it's a, it's a good point you bring up, though, because there are a lot of technologies out there that do offer that and do even proclaim to be replacements. And I don't know. I'm, I'm just... I'm not convinced there's anything out there to replace that humble white cane, or in my case, blue, Mark, because I had mine painted blue. I don't know why. I just did. And, uh, you know, and the guide dog, well, you're not allowed to paint those. They, th those have to stay in their natural colour. <laughs> well, you know, last week, even you know, during our CES show, we talked to Mel Fabian from Biped, and mm. they've been trying to do something similar to this with a hardware-enabled vest that had various cameras and sensors on board. Take a look at this clip. So Biped is an obstacle avoidance uh, system for blind and vision impaired people. Um, the idea is that it's as close as it gets, uh, replicates what self-driving cars do, but at a pedestrian level. So it's um, it has a couple of uh, cameras that scan 170 degrees of field of view around the person on the harness that is worn on the shoulders. And then the AI software that we built is able to detect all sorts of obstacles, pedestrians, um, electric scooters or vehicles that might have a risk of collision with you and warn the person using sound feedback um, and the sound would typically um, feel like a parking assist of a car so it's like a sequence of bip if an obstacle is coming from the left the person would hear bip 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 but with a spatial like a 3d effect so that you know the obstacle is actually coming from the left now you see that's really interesting mark and you know as i say you know i'm always very wary when i hear replacement for the white cane replacement for the guide dog but you know even Mel there says, you know, look, this is something which can be a companion, but it could potentially help some people. I think we have to always break this down a little bit. There are people who are totally blind who will always need access to a guide dog or white cane. I think we just have to say that and we have to accept that. There's nothing out there that can be a replacement for someone who's totally blind. Now, for someone with low vision, and I think about myself being in my 20s when I had just enough vision to get around without a white cane, Something like this could actually help because you could actually use something like this without having to think about using a white cane because I wasn't at that point. So I think maybe we look at this a little bit differently and think more about how this technology can help us for those people who don't need a white cane or guide dog yet. But for someone who does, I think we're stuck with that for now. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. What is it about that white cane that makes it irreplaceable? Is it the the tactile feedback, that instant response, in addition to the fact that you're not focusing on sensors and messages coming from left, right, and center? What is it exactly that makes that so irreplaceable? Well, you think about mission critical, right? When you think about when you're out and about, what's the mission critical part of your day? Now, in your case, it's using your eyes, your ears, all your senses to move around your space. But for someone like myself, you know, I don't have the sight aspect. So what I do is I use my hearing and I use my sense of touch and I use the cane with that to enable me to move around space. And when that cane, when that tip touches the ground, the information that's being passed up the cane into the handle is very rudimentary, but it's really important and it's real. It's, it's live. It's happening now and it's not being delivered by sensors like you say or any of that kind of technology, it's actually more about the fact that the simplicity of the cane is its winner, it is, is always the winning fact for me, because it's so simple in that it just gives you raw feedback from the ground. And that information can be critical, knowing whether you veered off onto a grass verge, knowing where the curb is, and lots of different people take a lot from the cane differently. But of course, 
as a as a child in my case I was taught to use the white cane you actually have to be registered to use a white cane mark you can't just buy one out off the the shelf and just go and use it you have to be registered to use it I feel quite proud I feel like it's like my, that's the closest I'll ever get to passing a driving test and I did it as a child so you know it's <laughs> impressive stuff but you know the cane is so valuable and the guide dog is similar because similar information comes up through the harness from the dog for example going up and down stairs or you know when the gradient changes when you're walking along a road so you know that information again comes through the harness and it's a very real real information it's very hard i think for companies to try and create some kind of sensor based version of this and i don't really know if there's a need for it you know this conversation isn't new i remember when the excitement was going absolutely nuts over the lidar sensor on the mm. iphone 13 pro and even the yep. ipad pro from a couple of years back but, but have we seen that really evolve Again, in the assistant sense, yes. I mean, I still feel we're at a very early stage with all this. I mean, you know, door detection is, by the way, still a pro feature in an iPhone. So not a lot of people have got the chance to try this out yet. You have to have the pro version of the iPhone 13 or iPhone 14. And, you know, at the moment, because LiDAR is only available on those devices, that's the one you have to have. To have. Now, in saying that, those who have tried it do feel it's it's good. It's not perfect, but it's okay. And, you know, if you want to find a location, you want to find a door, that's great. And I think the problem is for a lot of people that it's more context is required in that moment. So, for example, I go to a hotel. Identifying the door is great. But what's the door number? That's more interesting to me. I really don't want to just bunk up with the first person I find in a hotel. I'd like to get to my room. Different though on the outside, because when you're traveling outside, you get out of an Uber and you wonder where the door is to a location, that is when it can be crucial. But again, it's got that pro aspect to it. And I wish they would bring LiDAR to more devices. Hey, maybe the new iPhone uh, SE, if they, if, they don't, if they don't cancel it, because there's all kinds of rumors about whether or not it'll actually show up in 2023 or not. But if it does, the fourth generation, hopefully that might have LiDAR in it. I think I'm dreaming though. Stephen, this week we're going to be catching up with our friends at Humanware, who you know, and the maker of the Braille displays mm. and embossers and the Victor Reader. Well, they've got a new product called the Stellar Trek that has some promise in this space. Definitely. So stick around because we have got Lucy Begley from Humanware all ready to go when we come back right here on Double Tap TV. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us feedback at doubletaponair.com. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. We're back on Double Tap TV with the Regional Sales Manager for Humanware in the UK, Lucy Begley. Thank you for joining us this week, Lucy. Tell us about this new product then, the Stellar Trek. Okay, so the new Stellar Trek is a GPS device with built-in cameras. So what's a GPS device? It's a, a device that takes information from the satellites in space um, to give us our location, our GPS coordinates. And it takes that information and plots that onto the maps that are loaded onto the Stellar Trek. So I live in Scotland. I've got the Scottish map loaded on there. So the information from the satellites plots my position, my coordinates on my Scottish map. And it can tell me information about my surroundings, like what street, what street I'm on. So if I'm outside, it will actually say you're on Main Street or you're on King Street. Um, and it gives more information than that as well. So as I'm walking along Main Street and I approach an intersection, the Stellar Trek will say three-way intersection or four-way intersection. Um, and that lets me know that I'm coming to, of course, an intersection. A three-way intersection means I could it, it could be a road on my left and it will tell me the name of that road on my left. Um, so three ways would be the opportunity to turn left, to go straight on or to turn around and come back the way I came. So that would be a three-way intersection, whereas a crossroads would be a four-way intersection. The Stellar Trek also tells me, um, again, additional information about my surroundings, like uh, landmarks. So it could be shops or maybe a pedestrian crossing or landmarks that I've added in myself. So my own front door, um, maybe a post box, that kind of thing as well. So. And GPS doesn't in any way replace uh, your mobility skills or your dog or your cane. It just gives you that bit more information to give you hopefully a bit more confidence when you're out and about exploring either new areas or just to get that more information about the, the routes that we walk every day. 
Oh, interesting. So this really is about navigating routes that you might use more often than others, or I guess even discovering new places. Now, one of the things I saw was that the Stellar Trek communicates a more natural language rather than technical jargon. Is that intentional? So the, the purpose of the Stellar Trek, so yes, it's a GPS device, and I'm, I'm sure um, a, a lot of you will maybe have GPS or certainly have heard about it before. What really makes the Stellar Trek unique are the additional cameras that are built into it. So GPS has always been accurate to within about 10 metres, about three feet. Um, and what that means is the it, you, sometimes it says you're at number 15 Main Street and you might be right there, but you but you may also be about 10 metres away. So that's always been, um, you know, I, I guess a limitation with GPS. And it's, it's the same with car sat navs and things as well. It might not just be absolutely bang on. So the camera is built into the Stellar Trek. Um, one of the uses of those um, is about address recognition. So it gets you those final, final sort of 30, 40 feet. So where the standard GPS products um, in the past would have stopped guidance, we can now hold up our Stellar Trek, take a picture of where we think the door is, and the Stellar Trek will use AI, artificial intelligence, built into the cameras to hopefully recognise, yep, that's a front door. It's at two o'clock and it's 10 metres away or it's three feet away, you know, whatever it is, you know, you can, you can uh, 30 feet, you can choose whether you want metric or, or imperial. Um, so it's, it's just giving, you know, on a clock face, that just extra information about, oh, okay, so my door is there, it's a bit further than I thought, and actually, oh, it's over at two o'clock, so that means I need to adjust my angle to the right a little bit. So it's really good at, uh, you know, not using too much jargon. You know, I think that's really important. We just want we just want straightforward language, don't we? Um, so it uses things like uh, the word landmark rather than POI, which, you know, which stands for point of interest, but we just talk about landmarks to just make it nice and accessible and nice and easy to use. Is. Wait, that, that's just amazing because we talk about, especially here often, that the last couple of feet is where the problem really lies. So how does it do that? Uh, and don't say it's magic. So the, the use of AI, the use of artificial intelligence is really exciting, I, I think, you know, um, with the Stellar Trek. So it's because of this, it's because of artificial intelligence that the camera can recognise that it's, well, that the, the AI can recognise that, OK, that's a front door. That's not just a rectangle in space. That's actually we we've sort of compared that picture to pictures in our database, and we are pretty sure that that's a front door at two o'clock and ten meters away, rather than it just being sort of a, a, a shape in a picture. So that's what the the AI is all about. Um, now it's not a hundred percent. You know, we're we're this is the beginning of this journey, and it will be it will continue to evolve, and 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 the, you know the the users are entitled to free software updates. Um, so, I mean, obviously doors come in all you know, different sort of shapes and sizes and things. So what, what people have an op a option to opt into, they don't have to, but they can anonymously send pictures just of the address recognition side of things. So if they take a picture of a door, for example, people have the option to opt in and send us uh, those pictures so that we can enhance our database of front doors, <laughs> uh, which doesn't sound that exciting. But what it does is it makes more front doors recognisable as doors doors and not windows. Um, so the, the testing that I've done so far, I've been really impressed with. As I say, it, it's not 100% we reckon. It's about 60 to 100% accurate. And it might be that you have to take that picture two, three, four times, you know. So I think it's important for people to realise they do, might need to persevere a little bit. And it's not always going to be absolutely perfect first time. But the more information uh, that we can get, the more examples of pictures of different types of doors, particularly things like, you know, in a, in a shopping centre and it's, you know, it's glass doors surrounded by windows, you know. So building up the database, the artificial intelligence database of doors like that so that they can pick out features that do indeed identify them as doors um, is really helpful. So it's not perfect, but it's it's certainly great to to be any any additional information about our surroundings is, is always helpful. That is quite amazing, as I'm sure you can just imagine, Mark. Yeah, no, definitely. Now, Lucy, don't go anywhere because we want to continue this conversation, but need to take a quick break. This is Double Tap TV. We'll be back with Lucy Begley from Humanware in just a moment. Can't get enough Double Tap TV? Subscribe to the podcast and get your fill of Double Tap every day. Visit DoubleTapOnAir.com and follow us now. Double Tap TV will be right back. 
You're watching Double Tap TV. We're back here with HumanWare's regional sales manager in the UK, Lucy Begley. Now, Lucy, can you demonstrate and show us the Stellar Trek in action? Yeah, of course I will. So I've, I've got the Stellar Trek um, I'm holding up to the camera at the moment. So it, it was very lightweight and, and, and portable. Um, I'm easily holding it in one hand. Um, there's no screen on it at all. It's all speech output and all the buttons are tactile. Um, some of them are uh, different colours. Um, so there's a, a, a voice button, for example, that's orange, but the rest of them are black. It's, it's more about being um, accessible via touch than sight. Um, so it's a rectangular shape with the majority of the buttons um, on the front. So we've got sort of an arrow keypad with uh, two buttons above there and two buttons below. Um, on the right hand edge, I, I've got more tactile buttons. One's a record button um, and one's the power button. So the record button is where I would record uh, a, a landmark. So you know, probably one of the first things people would do would be to once they turn it on and, and get a signal, you would record your own front door and you press the record button and say my front door, you know, so you're always going to be able to create a route back to that place. We can also use that record button to actually record routes, which is really, really helpful as well, because um, automatically generated routes might not necessarily be the, the safest way to go. You know, it might be that you want to record your own route. It might be slightly longer, but it then takes in that pedestrian crossing. That's the best and safest way to cross that busy main street. So recording your own routes drops breadcrumbs as you walk it so that it can give you turn by turn directions next time. Um, but then around the back of the unit, I've got the, the cameras that I've mentioned that are built in here. Um, now, it does come with a belt clip to protect those cameras, you know, just for, when you're out and about. But when we slide it out, we've got access uh, to the cameras. Um, and the and then I've got a wrist strap attached uh, to, to the bottom of it. So you just want to keep it secure, but put it around your wrist. So these cameras, I've mentioned about the address recognition already. So holding it up, pointing at where we hope the door will be. And that's where it would, it would hopefully say the door number. If it can read the door number, it will actually say number 15. Um, and it will recognise that, yes, that, that's a door there and the, the angle that, that, you know, this on a clock face and the distance. But these cameras can also be used for things like food packaging or reading a letter or reading a menu um, when you're out in a restaurant, um, which is excellent, you know, because it's such a portable device um, to be able to be in a supermarket hold up a tin of something and take a picture and know whether that is baked beans or baked beans with sausages. You know, that's it, it can be, it's obviously a really um, handy thing to have in your hand and nice and easy to use. Brilliant, Lucy. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about this new device. Now, Stephen, I could tell you want to get your grubby hands on this, don't you? Of course I do. I mean, it's tech, right? Of course I want to get my hands on it. But, you know, I think the great thing about this is, you know, and it's interesting, we've had a chat about this on uh, the Double Tap radio show as well and podcasts, by the way, which you can get anywhere you get good podcasts, just saying. Um, but, you know, the great thing about this this device is that it's, it is a companion device, and it doesn't have a lot of the features that you would get in a smartphone. In fact, they've removed a lot of the features in this edition to their previous Victor Reader Trek, which you can still buy. And the Victor Reader Trek has the internet radio capabilities. You can download podcasts onto it. You can do lots of other great things with that device. It is an internet-connected device as well. But like I say, you can put a lot more content on it, audiobooks, that kind of thing. Uh, but they've taken a lot of that functionality out in the Stellar Trek and instead added in the cameras we heard about and added in that AI capability with, for example, door detection. So really interesting features. But I... Um, I wonder how many people will rush out and buy this when the smartphone can do a lot of the same things. Considering the price, considering how people are living these days, can a blind person afford to spend that kind of money on this kind of device? And that price you're talking about is about over $1,500 Canadian, which is pretty significant. But it kind of reminds me of, of, of the Clue app. Remember the app that lets you record routes and then follow them you know, home or backwards? Well, this is basically that, but in dedicated hardware, isn't it? It is, but it's got buttons. It's got the physical buttons, it's got the voice. You know, there's a security in using a device like this. And even someone like me who loves my iPhone, uses it for a lot of things, I still go back to my Victor Reader every so often. Because, you know, one thing about it is it's built for me. It's built not to require a screen. It's built to be able to just be used for that function. And actually, I think that's quite that's quite important. And it's funny, the, the longer I've 
gone through this experience of losing vision and actually, you know, feeling more blind by the day in some respects, you know, I actually have noticed the value in these kind of products. I used to shy away from specialist products like this. I used to always think, no, I don't want to go down this route. I'd rather have the mainstream option. But when you need to get something done in a hurry, and let's be honest, you know, GPS, getting yourself home, let's say you're in an unfamiliar environment and maybe you don't feel particularly safe in that moment. You want to push a button and get the directions and get the heck out of there, right? So, you know, you don't want to be faffing around with the phone trying to find the maps and, you know, get into the, 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 the field that, you know, you can type into and, you know, put in your home address. You want to just get out of there. These devices can be really valuable for that. Not, not always going to be used in a situation like that, of course, but the point is you want to be able to get the job done as easily as possible. And there's those added features with the cameras and the AI as well. So this is definitely one to be watching and I would love to get my hands on one. Amazing, well, that is the Stellar Trek, S-T-E-L-L-A-R. I say that without the Scottish accent so you can hear it. And you can find that on the HumanWare website. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week on behalf of Stephen Scott and of course, Lucy Begley from HumanWare. I am Marco Flalo. We will chat again next week. Thanks for watching Double Tap. Send us your feedback to feedback at doubletaponair.com. Leave us a voicemail at 1-877-803-4567. Hosted by Marco Flalo in Montreal and Stephen Scott in Glasgow. Producer Marco Flalo. Editing and graphics Jordan Steves. Voiceover Anna Vicino. Social media Wendy Kaufman. Integrated described video specialist M. Williams. Supervising producer Michelle Dudas. Manager Programming AMI-TV, Lizanne Gagné. Director, Content Development and Production, Karen Nye. VP, Content Development and Operations, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2023, Accessible Media, Inc.